How is it that some people claim to hear the voice of God and go on to perform great exploits for the kingdom, while others suffer through a lifelong battle of doubt and confusion, never stepping into the call of God for their lives? The answer, up next on Continuum. of the enemy. Was that the voice of God? My voice? My voice? The voice of the, the voice devil. When I hear the voice of God tell me to go, I'll go. I'm just waiting on the Lord for His will for my life. God put me on the shelf. I can't hear the voice of God. The truth of God. He has already told us his will in Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Men in motion will hear and obey the voice of God. It's National Children's Day in Thailand, and here we are in Siracha, our home base for our mission, our ministry across Asia. And uh, this is a day, a Saturday, when everything for kids is free, and kids are here just by the thousands, and the Army's here, fire department's here, and they're opening up, and there's all kinds of little field trips you can take and so on. For us, the key as missionaries is to really be in the thick of things when anything like this is going on, whether it be this city or in any other places that we minister across Asia. And so we've got our boys over here playing in a, on a bandstand, and uh, they're just pumping out some tunes here, and got a lot of kids gathered around there. Our Bible college students are here and passing out tracks and advertising the different uh, kinds of ministry that we have going on in the city. We've actually got probably a dozen different ministries going on in this city that are to bless and to meet the needs of these people and a tremendous outreach. And of course, things are growing wonderfully because of all that. But this takes a lot of manpower, it takes a lot of mobilizing people. We've also got all of our El Shaddai kids running around here today and uh, just having a good time with them. We got missionaries that are looking after them today and just a whole uh, team of people that operate together wonderfully. But the key again is to mobilize these people. When we look at our lives, at your life and at my life, how is it that we really get to be mobilized? We've got Bible school students here from all across the world that are getting special training in times like this. You know, our classes have been going on and we actually doubled classes yesterday so that they could be out of Bible college today to be ministering here. We've got a team of them over at the mall as well. We'll be visiting that a little later on and uh, handing out tracts and advertising the Lord and the love of Jesus over there as well. And so this is a great time, but you know what? When we think about getting here, getting the people here, and I look at the faces and the people that we got here, and I'm so thankful to the Lord for what he's done in each and every life. But you know, I, I, when we're talking today about how we mobilize people, let's talk a little bit about how we hear the call of God for our lives. And I see that that's one of the greatest needs across the nations is people say, what does God want me to do? How can I hear a word from the Lord? How can I get to be doing the will of God for my life? And you know, really, obviously, God wouldn't make it that hard. He said in His Word that He's abounded toward us in all wisdom and understanding of His Word and of His will in Ephesians chapter 1. So He's not holding back on us, but yet we find this struggle in so many lives. How do I know if God wants me there, God wants me here, what He wants me to be doing? 
I'll give you a little key today. As long as we're looking at the promise of God and the Word of God and the will of God, we will hear very clearly the go ye into all the nations and make disciples. But if we're looking at reasons why we can't go, you know, I think of one young man that I met years ago, and he said his wife and him really wanted to be, become missionaries, but they had two little kids. So, you know, because of the kids, they couldn't leave their home and they couldn't go and become missionaries. And I said to him, I said, you know, you're talking to the wrong guy. When my wife and I left for Thailand in 1982, our oldest daughter was four, the second one was two years old, and our son was four months old. So don't tell me you can't go because you have kids. And it's, the point is that as long as we're looking at reasons we can't go, we won't hear the reason to go. And the key really for us is to empty ourselves of our own excuses, our own fears, and all of those kind of things, and really focus and say, God, what is it that you want me to do? I can remember sitting with a man one time, and he said, I don't really know if God wants me to go or not. And I said, well, thus saith the Lord, go. You know, he said in Matthew 28, go into all the world. It's not that difficult. But again, as long as we're looking at the excuses, and today we're going to look at some of the lives of the people in the ministry here, some of our tremendous team members, and how they overcame some of their excuses, some of the reasons they couldn't go. And when you do that, you end up in places like Thailand, places like Nepal, uh, you know, Pakistan, Philippines, wherever it may be, and doing the fulfillment of God's will and His purpose on our life. There's nothing greater. And let me encourage you today, as you meet some of our people and we see what's going on around the exciting times here today in Sirja, that God would speak to your heart so that you could lay aside the excuses or any fears or concerns, you know, that you have about doing what God wants to do so that we can hear clearly from heaven that God says, go, here's where you go, here's what you do. And God has a will and a plan for our lives that will make us so absolutely wonderfully fulfilled in Him. And I love it, and that's why we're so happy, not because of Children's Day and everything's free, but because of the grace and the love of God on our lives. He has taken us from where we were and put us into a life of tremendous fulfillment. So let's be thankful today, and let's listen to what God is saying to us. Dean and Kathy Torgerson were a successful young couple raising their family in Canada. Dean was an accounts manager, while Kathy enjoyed working as a carrier for Canada Post. They were blessed and happy. The Lord really spoke to us at a church uh, service, actually. And I remember the Lord just said that until we were ready 100% to stop relying on ourselves and to turn to Him and to just trust Him, he was going to continue to take away all of our comforts. And really, at this point, the only thing we had left was our house. Soon after, the Lord appeared to Kathy in a vision. And I just had this vision flash to me, and I'd never had a vision before. And it was really neat. And it only probably lasted a second or two, but in that vision, I saw our family in the mission field. Long term, I knew that it wasn't a short-term mission, it was a long-term commitment and it involved our entire family. And I was very excited about this because missions is something that we had always talked about, um, but it had always been short-term missions that we had thought about going on. And I remember driving home with the girls and sharing with them that, Lord wants us to go into missions, pray with me. And I'm sure they thought it was nuts, <laughs> but they did. And I got home and on the drive home I was just really, really praying that Dean would have had the exact same vision in his breakfast so that it would have just been easy but I got home before you did, and I went up to our room, and I just prayed, and I was praying out loud. And I remember the Lord said quietly to me, He says, sometimes you have to stop talking so I can talk to you back. And I never really thought of that before, so I did. I just was quiet for just a moment. And in that moment, the Lord gave me a second vision, and this one was so vivid. And I was in this vision, I was standing behind Jesus, and I had my hands just clenched in his robe and what he was saying to me was walk where I walk and just do what I do and I just started crying and because it, it was confirmation to my heart I think that I I hadn't made up that first vision it wasn't something that I had just Conjured thought, up. yeah I thought up on my own Dean and Kathy committed the vision to prayer and trusted God to confirm his word in their lives the very next morning Dean and Kathy's friends prayed for the couple telling them God showed them Dean and Kathy serving on the mission field. Yeah, it was just like, hey, we didn't just make this up. We didn't just imagine this. This was very real, and God is mm -hmm. really calling us. And all of a sudden, life started to make sense. 